Happy week 13, everybody. It's the Gridiron Gals, and I'm your host, the NFL Chick, along with my beautiful co-host, Miss Pigskin Loving Lady. I'm just amazed that we've gone by 13 weeks, and, you know, it's playoff time. The Colts and the Saints look great, and everybody else is just there, you know? <laughs> yeah. You ready to start? Yeah, today? it's amazing. And not only are the Colts are undefeated, but we're, I think, you know, the two quarterbacks are com- competing for, um, the NF, um, the MVP of the season. So let's see. It's time to get down to the nitty gritty. Absolutely. Let's start the games. We first got the Philadelphia Eagles at the Atlanta Falcons. And, um, the Falcons, this is the Michael Vick coming home party. You know, we all know he started his career in Atlanta. Then the dog fighting situation happened and Philly gave him a second chance in the NFL. I don't think this, this is really going to be about Mike Vick, but I think that the fact that he comes home to his, you know, original, uh, planning place in the mm-hmm. NFL makes this game a little bit more than what people would. Yeah. Chris Redman is playing in place of Matt Ryan. Um, I'm just going to pick the Eagles because I think right now they're a little more healthier than the Falcons, and um, they're ready to make a playoff run. I don't necessarily trust Chris Redman right now to take the helms of a, a team that's trying to get to the playoffs. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the Eagles. Yeah, I'm going to pick the Eagles as well. And I think there'll be a lot of emotion in the building and a lot of number sevens um, jerseys in the building as well because we all know that the city was divided when it came to Mike Vick. You know, some of them wanted him back and some of them wanted him out of there. So I do think his presence, you know, will make some type of difference. It won't be um, the rallying cry that the Atlanta Falcons would need to beat the Philadelphia Eagles, but it'll definitely be nice to see him come back. And I think, you know, he, it, it'll be a nice reception for him, but I'm still taking the Eagles. Like you said, they have to stay, you know, right along with um, Dallas Cowboys um, if they want to make it to the playoffs. So I'll take the Eagles as well. All right. All right. That's, we both pick the Eagles. Next game mm-hmm. we have is the Tennessee Titans at the Indianapolis Colts. And I'm calling it. This is the end <laughs> of the Indianapolis Colts season oh, uh, really? streak. This okay. is the end of their streak. This is the beginning of a streak and the ending of another. The uh, the Titans have been on a roll, you know, winning all of their games since Vince Young came in. Chris Johnson is unstoppable. And I don't think yeah. that the Colts have a plan for Chris Johnson. Um, I think that the longer that the offense of the Titans stays on the field, the better the chance that they have to win, as we all know. And Chris Johnson mm-hmm. is just that, that dude, you know what I mean? I just mm-hmm. don't know. Um, if the Colts are really going to be able to stop them. I'm going to go ahead and pick the Titans because they're really on a roll. And usually this is around the time that the Colts lose a game. And you know what? You know, I've been picking against the Colts for the last two weeks because I thought the teams that they played were capable of possibly beating them. And I think I'm agreeing with you. I'm shocked. You know, initially when you said Tennessee, but then when you think about it, they really, they really can beat the Colts. Not only do they have to stop Chris Johnson, but you know, they haven't came out the gates fast and shooting. And I think, that the Titans have, you know, they're on power, on on fire. And one thing Chris Johnson also does is he takes the pressure off of Vince Young. You know, so if he could run and have them, you know, preparing for him, that gives Vince Young the opportunity to use his feet to score and get to the wide receivers. So um, I'll pick the Titans as well in the upset against the Colts. All right, we both pick the Eagles and the Titans. The next game we have is your favorite team, and I'm using sarcasm, the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys at the New York Giants. And I am not comfortable with picking the Giants at all. Yeah. I think the Cowboys are playing extremely well, and I think Miles Austin is playing at a superb level. However, the Giants are at home. And I think that this is going to be a tough game. Um, divisional matchups are always hard games yeah. anyway. I think that the Giants are mm-hmm. going to find some type of way to win this game because this is their arch nemesis. Um, I don't really have a other, any other reason than that because I think Dallas is playing good football right now, good enough to win football games, and the Giants just can't get it together. But I'm going to go ahead and pick the Giants. You know what? Here it is. I'm surprising myself, but I'm going to go ahead and pick the Dallas Cowboys. And the reason why the New York Giants are limping right now, they're hurting, you know, on offense, they're hurting on defense, you know, the running game is slow, and the the Cowboys just got the steam. And I know there is this monkey on their shoulder about the month of December, but this is the first game of the month, and I'm telling you, if they can win this game, it would give them so much confidence. And the very fact that I'm picking you – 
should give y'all guys some comfort and confidence and go up into uh, the Meadowlands and get a win. Um, not only, you know, I just think the Giants are really hurting right now. They could start preparing for next year. And honestly, O.C. Uriura and Justin Tuck, they're just not enough right now. I think, you know, they're a little gimpy. They're probably not saying it. But they're not really putting their nose to the ground like they had, you know, in week one and two. So I'll go ahead and give a nod to the Cowboys. All right. This is the first game we chose apart. I'm picking the G-Man. You're picking the boys. Well, let's go to Minnesota at Arizona for the Sunday night football game. And this is this is going to be a pretty interesting game, I think, especially if Kurt Warner comes back from his concussion. It's Kurt Warner. Um, but, you know, Minnesota said, who's going to check me, boo? I don't I think Minnesota's gonna. I don't think Minnesota's gonna lay down today. I, and you know, um, I don't mean any harm. But even Darnell Dockett on Twitter was asking people, "How does he stop Minnesota?" He doesn't even know how they're gonna stop Minnesota. If he can't figure right. it out, so how do I expect fifty-two other guys to do it? I'm picking the Vikings because, other than the Saints, they are the hottest team in the NFC, and they could easily yeah. be a Super Bowl candidate. Yeah, and they have two candidates on their team that could possibly be MVPs of the league in Brett Favre and Adrian Peterson. And you know what I thought about? I was like, you know, everybody, not that Chris Johnson doesn't deserve the chatter that surrounded his name, but the fa- I know AP, he's competitive. He got to hear it, and, and, you know, being a competitor in him, he wants the Russian title too. So I can see them really trying to show out and make a mark and, you know, set themselves apart from some of these other teams so I'll give Minnesota the nod. It's hard to go against them the way they've been playing. So I don't think I don't think Arizona is really ready to handle Minnesota. I don't know who's ready to handle Minnesota. It really is who's going to check me boo when it comes to the Vikings. Exactly. So we both think in Minnesota, we think that they can handle yeah. the Arizona Cardinals. Our last game is the Baltimore Ravens, my boys, my boys. against the Green <laughs> Bay Packers in Lambeau Field. The last time the Ravens yeah. went to Lambeau, it was not pretty – it was just Brett Favre just beat us down, and um, here we are, you know, eight years later, back in Lambeau, and I kind of see the same thing happening. You know, Aaron Rodgers, when you give him time in the pocket, he will make you pay. The Ravens' secondary is suspect at best. Um, while I think Ladarius Webb is a stud as a cornerback, the other, the other, you know, they don't get the pass rush like they used to with Terrell Suggs being out. The offense on the road, they haven't been able to score as many points as they would have liked. So I, I just can't see picking against Green Bay right now. And it saddens me to say this because I want to believe that my boys can do it. I just don't think that as far as defense is concerned that they can stop Aaron Rodgers, who's really playing well right now. Oh, and let's not forget Charles Woodson and the number two defense in the league, the Green Bay Packers. You know what? It, um, Aaron Rodgers, he's good. I think, I think, you know, but once he's uncomfortable in the pocket, he becomes questionable. But his safety net, honestly, is his wide receiving core. These guys, you know, they don't get a lot of recognition, but they are good. Donald Driver, Greg Jennings, um, even, you know, Ryan Grant, he, he's consistent as running back position. You know, when I see the matchup, I, that's where to me it happens because the Green Bay Packers, uh, defense is good enough to stop the run, you know, so I look at that matchup between the second year and the right receivers and I just give the edge to the Green Bay Packers but I will say this, even though I'm picking the Packers, you know, if the Baltimore Ravens can apply enough pressure on um, Rodgers and start, you know making him second guess himself he can very well, you know, get rattled and start throwing INTs, but the comfort of knowing is he's at Lambeau so that's the reason why I'll pick the Packers you know, just because they're at home and I like the matchup between their um, wide receivers against the Baltimore Ravens secondary. So do I. So we're both picking the fact Packers, unfortunately. But yeah. that is it for the Week 13 edition of the Gridiron Girls Picks. I want to give a shout-out to our boy, Ed the Sports Fan. He told me to tell everybody, go Jags. Not that I care, but he's a big Jaguars <laughs> fan, so he felt the need to share that information with the world. So That's because we love you, Ed. That's Ed, the only reason you. why. Go Jags. <laughs> We love Ed, but, you know, hey, go Jags. So everybody have a good weekend, and we will see you guys next week.